Uh, good morning. For those of you that I have not met yet, I'm Jamie Myra. I'm the Executive Director here at PHA Canada, and we're so pleased to welcome all of you here to Ottawa and all of you out there on Zoom who are joining us remotely from across the country. We want to welcome you as well. Uh, we have over 300 people registered for the conference with over 200 of you here uh, at the hotel, and um, we're just so, so pleased to be back together again after a bit of a hiatus. Um, I hope you were able to join us last night for the very special welcome reception where we honored two very incredible leaders of the PH community, uh, Loretta Chu, formerly of Toronto, and Roberta Massender from Vancouver. I invite you to learn more about our eternal friends of PHA Canada, many of whom are here with us today, and more about PHA Canada's history on our website or at our uh, display that is out in the, the lobby to your left. Um, we will also hear more about PHA Canada's 15 years of inspiration during this morning's opening plenary. But first, I'd like you to welcome my friend and yours, our board, sorry, past board chair as of five o'clock last night, uh, Nicole Dempsey, to welcome you on behalf of the board of directors. Thank you, Jamie. Um, <clears throat> before I get started, I, I was forced to tell a little joke about the volleyball players <laughs> in this hotel. And when I say forced, I received many texts at my table um, in caps. So, without further ado, those guys are so tall. <laughs> How tall are they? When they fall over, you gotta say, Timber! <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So that was Michael. Uh, <laughs> Michael Robach, yes. All right. My name is Nicole Dempsey. I'm a PH patient and former board chair, so I don't know how I'm still up here uh, speaking to you today. I'm from Cambridge, Ontario, and I've been with the organization uh, since uh, close to diagnosis 10 years ago. On behalf of the board of directors, I welcome you to Ottawa, and it's amazing to see everyone here today. Uh, this looks like a, a big number, so it's really nice to see. Um, this is our first gathering since before COVID, and we appreciate the effort that you've all made today to be here. Um, our annual conferences are one of the most important initiatives. They provide patients and their families with a unique opportunity to learn um, and to be with one another and to connect and to gain support. Um, there's no one else in the world who who understands what patients uh, go through other than other patients and of course their caregivers. Um, I've, um, one of my favorite aspects of conference obviously is to, to, to meet other people in person. Um, this conference in particular, I know a lot of people recognize me because I've been on Zoom a lot. Um, and as of today, I am no longer required to be on Zooms. <laughs> Um, I also find it interesting because you have this, this perception of what people look like um, or, you know, whether they're short or tall. So when you see them in person, it's really interesting to put a face to the name. Um, and some people, um, like my, my own nurse is here today, and it's the first time we've seen each other without a mask. So that's interesting too. Um, so this conference is extra special, not, not only because it's our anniversary, but like I said, it's the first time we've been together and that's been since the Atlantic Forum in Halifax in 2019, so it's been a while. And this is our first national conference since Montreal. So raise, a, raise, a, raise your hand if you were in Montreal. Yeah, wow. So it's... Yeah, it's a small number, so obviously. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alors oui, je j'aimerais dire bienvenue à nos amis francophones. <laughs> Et puis je voulais juste dire que um, on est en train de, de traduire cette production en français. Et puis s'il y a des francophones dans la salle, et puis vous avez besoin des écouteurs, il y en a en arrière. Merci. All right, um, so speaking of Montreal, um, 
that's what, that was my next thing. <laughs> I was going to welcome our friends from, from Quebec. Um, and so, if you are online, uh, si vous êtes en ligne, sélectionnez le, le, la langue française et uh, sur le menu en bas du Zoom. And I would also, at this point, like to thank the interpreters who are doing a fabulous job uh, today. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> She's coming back. She's not off the hook yet. Um, so as you know, uh, Canada is not only a bilingual country, we also occupy land that has been inhabited by many cultures and nations since time immemorial. We'd like to acknowledge that today we are gathered on the traditional and unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation and take this opportunity to honor the Algonquin people for their stewardship of these lands and waters and the valuable contributions that they continue to make. At PJ Canada, the staff over the last year and a half have been on our own journey of exploring reconciliation for ourselves and within the organization. We spent some time as a team uh, going through the, the truth and reconciliation calls to action and thinking about how they apply not just in our lives and in our Canadian society, but in particular at PHA Canada and how they, can, they impact the work that we do. And so it's a very um, special moment today that we're going to do something that we've never done here at PHA Canada, but I'd like to welcome uh, Don Clark to the stage. Uh, Don is going to welcome you to Ontario and offer a prayer of gratitude for this opportunity to gather here together today. Don is a member of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation near southern, or in southern Ontario near Brantford and the neighboring Six Nations of the Grand First Prairie. She will introduce herself to you a little bit more and, uh, and offer up a welcome to you all. Hello, <laughs> Ani, we say from, from our nation, and bonjour. My, my name's Don Clark. Um, I, as Jamie said, I'm from Mississaugas of the First Nation in Southern Ontario, or Mississaugas of the Credit. And I've only lived there maybe, I guess, half my life in and around the area. Uh, so I grew up in a mil military family. So my dad is actually, obviously, non-native and with his lighter skin, and he's from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. My mom grew up on the New Credit Reserve, now called Credit. Um, and interestingly enough, um, her and her family and many of the families there grew up not knowing that they were First Nations or they were Indigenous. So because already by that point, there was so much sh shame associated with it. Um, so they weren't even aware that they were indigenous until they started going to school off the reserve. So, so I guess in the past 30 to 40 years, they're really, everyone there is still trying to learn, relearn the culture and the languages, and it's actually quite wonderful and beautiful to see. Very proud of, of everybody there. Um, so for me, who grew up away from the reserve until I become an adult and a mother, um, I, I know even less, so really the smudging is just a little bit of what I know, and I'm going to do that. And our smudging is basically to do to give thanks to the Creator, as well as um, ask for blessings. So I will do that today. Um, I've been diagnosed with PH since just coming up to four years now, and. Um, I'm a lot better than I was at the beginning, so I walked up without oxygen, but four years ago that wouldn't have been the case. Um, what else can I say? I was a registered nurse. Well, I still am a registered nurse, but I'm a non-practicing at this point. I think after three years of, of not working as a nurse, you need to um, kind of switch over your, your qualification, I guess. Um, to non-practicing, so that's what I am. But I am trying to uh, work my way up to combining um, singing and art and painting and drawing and writing, all of the creative things into mental health and put the two together and combine some kind of um, support for people to going through their healing journeys as I also continue mine, which is very important. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give, start the smudge. And I'm only going to light 
the smoke very lightly, like the sage, because I know we all have, or many of us have lung issues. If it even starts smoking. <laughs> there we go. A little bit. I smell it now. Can you? Yeah. We use smudge a lot of times for opening groups, opening sessions, workshops, and usually have a prayer at the beginning, but also we close with a prayer as well. Um, and for different ceremonies, um, sitting around the fire or even just in a group in a room, uh, we use this and we smudge. Someone sometimes goes around with a feather and uh, the smoke, and we would normally, so it went out already, we normally um, would, I'll show you what I do. I'll just put it in the smudge here. So initially, I use the smoke. So I'm gonna cleanse my eyes, my head, because of the vision and things that I'll see, my mouth and my throat. To speak good words and kind words, being stubborn today. <laughs> it's probably a good thing though. <laughs> there we go. And down to my throat, my heart, definitely in my heart. Heart is our center of our being. And I love to take it in there and just ask for healing, ask for prayer, for blessings, clear myself of any negative and invite the positive in. So I'm just going to do this for myself up here, just kind of as a global for all of us. And I go all the way down my legs and my feet. And if you have somebody with you doing it, you can also do the backside. <laughs> but I won't do that today. <laughs> so I'm going to just ask for a thanks and say miigwech for the opportunity to meet together today and this weekend especially considering the fires and the smoke that we've all experienced in the last uh, few days and the last week. Um, and put out blessings to anyone who's experienced losses as well and displacement. I'm gonna ask the Creator to help us learn from one another, be compassionate and loving and understanding to each other and to ourselves. Help us to find peace within our circumstances, our own circumstances, patience with ourselves and others. Miigwech and thank you for the beautiful sky above that we see that the rain falls from that hopefully is gonna help get rid of the fires and the smoke. The wind that we feel against our skin, the water that cleanses us and nurtures us, feeds us, and the land and animals that feed us as well and nurture us. Creator, teach us to, to heal the earth and one another there's so much we can do from inside ourselves. It's, it's crazy, but it, so much we can do. Creator, teach us, each of us, to have respect for our earth and each other, ourselves, no matter what race, color, orientation, or background, we are equal. So we ask you to cleanse our minds and souls so that we have a good mind to think with and a good mind to uh, deal with others. Um, to please protect our souls, protect us from harm. Miigwech to the, thank you to the organizers and planners, funding bodies, volunteers, and hotel staff for giving us this weekend together. It's been really appreciated. Safe travels to all, and as we say in uh, our language, Bamapi is see you later. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Well, Miigwech, thank you very much. We have an exciting and inspiring program for you today that's been designed that no matter where you are on your pH journey, whether you're a patient, caregiver, family member, or friend, um, there's going to be something for you. Um, 
This includes one of our most popular sessions, the Myth Busters. This always seems to be a popular session at PH conferences. And these are Q&As with medical experts, PH medical experts, and, and the closing plenary about the future of PH therapies in Canada. And as we all know, um, we, we're always interested to hear what's more on the horizon with, with therapies and uh, research. Um, there's also new topics such as the importance of patient information and experiences and um, it's called real world evidence and uh, to improve the care and treatment of pH. So now I just want to take this opportunity to thank the volunteers who've been instrumental in putting this weekend together because as you know with any kind of event um, it takes um, a, a, a huge amount of people to put something like this together. Um, we have the welcome reception committee and that's Donna. Donna Downs? Donna Downs, yeah. yes. Okay. We have Carolyn Doyle Cox, Lindsay Forsyth Barashu, Joan Gibson, Chris and Joanne Mainwood, Jane Cernoski, and Barbara Quinn. Thank you. Uh, we have the conference program committee. We have Jennifer Bryson, Sonia Collins, Lenore Cook. Kathy Downey, who is joining us live from Calgary because no time change can stand in her way of being here. <laughs> and Christine Ritchie and Beth Sloan White. So thank you to that committee. <clears throat> I also want to thank all the speakers who are volunteering their time today um, to share their, their, their expertise. Uh, many of our speakers are PH patients and caregivers, um, so hearing directly from them about their experiences, perspectives and needs um, and dreams is central to our mission, to PHA Canada's mission and values. Uh, we encourage you to be open and gracious as we learn from one another. Uh, we also want to recognize that experiencing these stories can sometimes be difficult, both for the storyteller and the listener. So please know that we are here to support you. If you need quiet time or break during the day, there is a designated uh, quiet zone in the lounge below the conference level. So please do what you need to take care of yourself today. We of course also want to acknowledge and thank the sponsors who have made this event possible. Uh, this year's gold sponsors are Janssen, Merck and Shoppers Drug Mart Specialty Health Network, who are also on site mixing Carapol, if any of you need some assistance uh, this weekend. Thank you so much to the Carapol nurses for that. Uh, our silver sponsor, United Therapeutics Corporation, and our bronze sponsor, Bayer. We also appreciate the support of several other organizations who have helped to bring us all together and to make this a great event. That includes the BC PH Society, who provided funds that helped uh, bring participants from BC, to CC Squared Photography, who provided uh, the photo booth and the balloons and uh, some of the photography last night, and Ashtay APQ, our partners and friends in Quebec, who also provided financial support to bring um, their members here this weekend, and to the Girl Guides of Canada local chapter, who thanks to uh, Lindsay, uh, are upstairs right now helping to entertain the children, including my own. So thank you to the Girl Guides and to Lindsay for that. <laughs> Um, I just, uh, before I do one more thank you and then turn it over to Nicole uh, for some introductions, I just want to do a couple of quick announcements. Uh, the first is a reminder about your scavenger hunt. If you uh, started to fill out the scavenger hunt icebreaker game last night or today, uh, just a reminder that if, uh, if you, once you fill it out, you can return it to the registration desk. There's a box there. And then at the end of the day, we will randomly draw three winners from that pile of completed scavenger hunt forms. and. Then there are prizes. So uh, yeah, make sure you don't forget about your form. I found a couple in the bathroom yesterday, so you might, some of you might need to start again. Um, but uh, yeah, just a reminder about that. <laughs> uh, yes, I, um, a, a Caitlin found a t-shirt on the floor of floor nine of the hotel. So if, I don't know, maybe somebody had a great night last night. I have no idea. But uh, if you dropped your t-shirt on the ninth floor, <laughs> we've got it. Somebody's pointing at Michael. Michael, is this yours? No, okay. <laughs> 
Uh, and then finally, um, I think you're mostly aware at this point, but we have an information table which will be staffed during the breaks by PH nurse, uh, nurses. So if you have questions or you want to get, get resources, we encourage you to visit our PH info table. And then right next to that is where you get all your PH swag. Uh, and uh, Jeremy and Elgin will be there throughout the day to help you if you want to purchase any items. If we don't have the size or the color that you're looking for, we brought the purple stuff, obviously. Uh, but if you are looking for another color, because we actually have a whole range of them, uh, you can also order directly from the website and uh, it'll just get shipped directly to you. Uh, so, yes. One last set of thank yous. Um, we could not do this without a whole team of people, as you know. And so I really want to thank the staff team for their incredible work these past several months. Uh, while Kim has really led the charge on planning this event, uh, everyone stepped in to make sure that you have a positive and welcoming experience. So please join me in thanking the staff team, Kim, Darren, Pat, Elgin, Jeremy, and Ethel, who's holding down the fort back in Vancouver for all their hard work. All right, now it's time to get started. It's my pleasure to introduce to you today the moderator of our opening plenary, who really needs no introduction. Dr. Sanjay Mehta has been involved in pH research and the care of pH patients since the beginning of time. No, <laughs> since the beginning of his medical career in 1989, <laughs> which is kind of like the beginning of time, right? <laughs> he is currently a professor of medicine and a consultant respirologist in West, at, when, at Western University and the director of the South West Ontario PH Clinic at the London Health Sciences Centre. Well, and, and his, his best job and his most important job is he's my doctor. <laughs> Dr. Mehta was never satisfied with simply being one of Canada's leading pH specialists. He also believed that patients and caregivers deserved a national organization to advocate, advocate on their behalf and support them throughout their pH journeys. In 2008, he joined with pH patients and caregivers from across the country to found PHA Canada. Dr. Mehta has now been a founding director of the board for 15 years, serving as chair from 2013 to 18, he was honored as an eternal friend of PHA Canada in 2008. Please join me in welcoming my doctor, Dr. Mehta. Good morning, friends. And as you know, around here we spell friends not with an F, but with a PH. Bonjour les amis francophones. Thank you, Nicole, very kind of you. It's obviously been a fantastic and wonderful 15 years getting to connect with so many of you as my patients, but as patients across the country and families and caregivers. And that's exactly what we're here to celebrate this morning. Um, welcome to those online as well, but sadly you're missing out. This is what we all needed and wanted, as Jamie and Nicole and Don have expressed so well. It's such a special opportunity to be together, to chat, to connect, to hug, all those things that we need as humans. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of what is really exciting about the last 15 years, but even more important, let's not just look backwards, let's look forward to what's really exciting, and we're going to do that with four very special invitees and guests in just a second. So all of you know pulmonary hypertension is, quotes a rare disease, and it's very easy to be exactly like, whoops, sorry, that went forward really quickly to be like that person, kind of isolated, and you all know this. You say to your friends and families, I have pulmonary hypertension, they go, what? What's that? Or they say, you don't look sick, you can't be that unwell, and that's a problem, obviously, that we face. And yet, a rare disease is also known as an orphan disease, and we'll chat about that. People think they understand this disease as hypertension. Oh yeah, I know about hypertension, that's high blood pressure. Of course it's not, it's the other high blood pressure. Love this graphic from the PHA US. And so rare disease is also an orphan disease, and that's a term that's often used. I'm not sure we like that term, but it does apply to a disease like pH 15 years ago. It's a disease that obviously affected few of you. It was ignored, nobody really knew about it in the community, there was very poor awareness. Even us as physicians didn't always recognize it, so it took a long time to diagnose it. 
you know, pharmaceutical companies really didn't get involved because it was a tiny disease area. They might not make a lot of money. Governments didn't care about it. So it was easy to think that it was an orphan disease, that nobody really had an interest in it. But of course, people were suffering and there had to be more that needed to be done for those people. And so what's new in pulmonary hypertension? Well, everything has changed from the community to medical care to, of course, all of us here at PHA Canada. And this is exactly why in 2008 we needed to do something. Sorry? And this is why exactly in 2008 we needed to do something. And so you see there the pictures of the seven founding members of PHA Canada. You heard from two of them last night, very special people that we heard from, Darren Bell, one of our founding presidents, and Jennifer Gendron from New Brunswick PHS, who was also a founding member. And you'll hear very briefly from one of my friends, Sharon Proudfit, also one of the founding members. Sadly, we've lost a few people along the way. Leon Peroyan, top left, was a bull of a man, had a daughter, Sherry, with pulmonary hypertension. He made it his mission in life to find a cure for pulmonary hypertension. Didn't happen, sadly, in his life, and we're still working towards that. And then also two very special patients, Linda Berrio and Liz McCall, who also lost their battles with pulmonary hypertension. But we carry on. So we had a board. Now, we had some ideas, and this idea still applies. That's our vision. For all of you that live with this, that are affected by this, both patients and, of course, caregivers, a better life. And whatever that means, able to do stuff, able to be with families, able to travel to a meeting like this, obviously not worried about the future. That is our simple vision. And how we do that, our mission is to do everything we can to empower you, educate you, support you, look after you, advocate for you at the government levels to make sure you have access to important medications, and obviously promote research as well, which you've asked us to do. So we had all these big ideas, the seven of us, now, we needed somebody to do the work. That wasn't going to be us. And so we hired our first staff person, Angie Knott, that some of you remember, as our national manager. And then, obviously, there was a lot of work to do. And very quickly, we realized that she couldn't do it on her own. And so Jen Gendron very kindly stepped down from the board and actually joined as a staff person. And so the two of them ran PHA Canada for the first several years. And so a very exciting time getting off the ground, connecting with people around the country. And so this is where we ended up today. This is our staff that Jamie's also said, already mentioned, and just in unbelievable. First of all, being very fortunate to have had Jamie now for six years, seven, seven and a half years. Um, she has such passion, vision, energy to take us forward, and she has done that in half of the life of PHA Canada. And she has assembled an incredible team of smart, hard-working, committed people that have put together this weekend, but also all the programs that all of you benefit from. So we're very lucky to have them. The board is also, yes, thank you. Now the board has also evolved. This unfortunately is a dated picture from last year and some people have stepped off. You heard from Nicole that she's quite happy to be done her term, but we're not gonna let her go that easily. We have some other ideas for her. Also at the bottom left is a dear friend, Jeanette Rays, one of the great nurses in PH, a pediatric nurse in Toronto, been doing that for many, many years, stepped off the board last year. And apologies, we don't have pictures of our new board members that you will meet during the day. And so just in the fall, Mike Pohanka joined us from uh, Kelowna. And then just exciting, this weekend, two other wonderful women have joined us, both patients. We have always wanted patients at the forefront of PHA Canada, and of course Nicole was our first patient chair, and so we're quite happy that Marion Roth has joined us from London, a patient of mine, and then also Beth Slonwhite from Halifax, a patient as well. So very exciting. The board is growing and moving forward, and clearly that patient caregiver input is critical to us, not just from our side, but from all of you as well. So with that, what are we doing? What have we done with all these people and all the energy that we have? Well, these are the goals of our current strategic plan. And we've had several series of these. We have a new one that we're putting together this year. And you can see what we want to do, and it's all those same ideas. We want to be there for you. First and foremost, support you, educate you. Make sure your journey through PH, however long it is, and it's getting much longer, people are living much longer, is as simple, as well-informed, as comfortable, as best as it can be. Secondly, obviously very important, that we need access to treatment. And that's clinics, it's medications, it's all the staff that work there, which we'll chat about. Now, 
you don't have medications if the governments don't approve them and companies don't develop them. So that's a big part of it as well, to get new medications. We'll chat a lot about that this afternoon in the future therapy session. Every time we do a survey of the community, those are important things to you, but it always comes up. Research. You want more research. Of course, everybody always wants a cure. That's a challenge in a disease like this, which often you come to us later in the course. I'm not sure even in my lifetime we will see a cure for most patients, perhaps. But most importantly, research can improve treatments, improve quality of life, improve the survival, which it absolutely has done over 15 years. And we are very confident, based on the last day and a half, the medical think tank, incredible research going on in Canada, that is going to continue to improve treatments and improve your lives. The last couple, we do believe we have become a leader in so many ways in the country. We speak for you, but we also listen to you. That's critical, of course. And the last thing that we have to look after being sustainable, and I think we've gotten to a fantastic position in terms of staff you've already heard about, but also fiscally looking after our books and our future. So with that, oh, I'm gonna pass on that. In terms of goal number two, access to care. We have 22 pH centers scattered across the country. And it's fantastic. You know, people in Canada live, obviously, in many remote areas, but there is a clinic close to most of you. Um, sometimes in Northern Territories and that, it's not so easy, but there's a lot of virtual care. But you have access to excellent care, essentially from Vancouver out to St. John's, Newfoundland. So quite lucky about that. The model of collaboration isn't just the doc that you see like myself. Of course, this is a complex disease. There's doctors, there's expert nurses, there's excellent allied health. Pharmacists are playing a bigger role in this disease given all the medications. And then a whole host of medical colleagues that have to participate in this. Even more so, besides the clinical care in these centers, there are now researchers embedded in all these centers. Clinical researchers, clinical research staff, as well as basic scientists who are studying why you have pH, why it's getting worse, and they obviously need the collaboration of the clinical people. So that's the most exciting part of the medical care of pH these days. As well, I mentioned before, the medical societies, in fact, the symposium yesterday was supported by the Canadian Thoracic Society, Canadian Cardiovascular Society has also come on to pH in a big way, which is fantastic and then pharmaceuticals, big sponsors of events like this, but also everything we do at PHA Canada, and of course, big drivers of research as well across Canada. And then finally, government. Government holds the purse strings. We always have to be talking to them, and so the advocacy piece. So that's what's going on right now. This is where we were 15 years ago. We actually had done quite well. We had seven therapies. One of them, Cytex sent, and we had lost along the way because of issues, side effects, but in 15 years since PHA Canada was founded, we haven't stopped. This has gone forward based on the research and all the development. And now in 2023, you see we have those medications also available, largely funded for all of you across the country. So when you go see your doctor, he has an incredible, he or she, apologies, has an incredible host of therapies that they can offer you. And most people, as you know, are not on one treatment, often two, sometimes three, because we want to be as aggressive as we can, safely, to get you as well as we can. And so it really has been a very special 15 years, and even longer than that, 25 years, that these medications have been developed. 10 is fantastic. And yet, is it enough? Well, no. People are still suffering day to day. People are obviously not surviving, as you've heard, and so we do need new therapies. As I mentioned, you always push us to do more in research. And this has become a very important priority at PHA Canada. We'd always had some involvement. We we're funding PH scholarships, and we've done that more and more so over the last few years. $150,000 to 15 fantastic researchers across the country. We heard from several of them yesterday, and just unbelievable work. That is going to change how we think about PH today and in the future. So really important. As well, Research depends on you. We need your involvement. When we do a clinical study, I know what I need to measure, but I need to hear from you. What would you like to see us measure in a research study to say, look, patients are actually benefiting? Is it your symptoms? Is it your functioning? Is it your capacity to, to enjoy life? And so those patient-reported outcomes, PROs, 
And patient perspectives are really important. So PHA Canada has already been doing that. In fact, most grants that go into the government have to have a patient perspective now. And so PHA Canada weighs in, they submit documents saying this is what patients want. And researchers have to listen and adjust the protocol to make sure those ideas are captured. So that's really, really important. As well, you've heard a little bit, I think, and we'll hear more about the research building capacity. We are improving the research capacity in Canada. One of those ways we do that is the Canadian PH Biobank. Now, for those of you who don't know that term, it's essentially a bank, a store of biological material. So blood samples, perhaps genetic material, as well as tests, your imaging tests, and also clinical information. You put that all together to understand the disease in each individual. Now that becomes a source of future research. So researchers in Canada can use that information when they study a new medication, a new science idea on those samples. As well, they collaborate internationally. All of our scientists in Canada are fantastic and well known around the world. So this is not only building Canadian research capacity, it's actually improving pH research globally. And so this is a big investment that we're proceeding with. Advocacy awareness, I've mentioned before, we do a lot at the government level, at the media level. Obviously, it's not going to change. It's going to give you one example of that. All of you know World PH Day, May 5, really important. And it is obviously a global issue, and there's efforts going on around the world to improve awareness. We obviously do that very well in Canada. And so May 5th, we celebrated recently. We do it in a very special way because all of you, half of you maybe are wearing purple, and that's important. So we paint Canada purple. Right from West Coast Vancouver this year out to St. John's, we have monuments, bridges, towers, waterfalls, Niagara Falls lit up in purple on May 5. So a very special way to build awareness. We've talked about the collaboration, the community. It starts with us in some ways, but it's not us. It's all of you. And this is a fantastic picture I love. I believe from Toronto, Montreal. Montreal. And so we had given out these beautiful purple blankets, obviously for pH, and that's all what the community is. And I just wanted to sort of emphasize that. The community is so strong and changing quickly. Let's go back 15 years, 2008. Show of hands, who was part of the Canadian pH community 15 years ago? Colleagues, David? I thought you were. So I'm gonna figure about 20 people, okay? We celebrated our 10th anniversary five years ago. Who was part of the PH community five years ago? Okay, so about half the room. Who's part of the PH community today? <laughs> so there we go. The growth over the 15 years just in all of you being part of, Can of PHA Canada. And that's what we need. That's what we want. We still lack for reaching out to everybody that gets diagnosed and could use our help, our support. And that's a big thing that we're going to focus on in the future. So with that, I'm going to pause and bring up four very special people. First and foremost, Sharon Proudfoot, a PH patient from Alberta, also one of the eternal friends of PHA Canada and a founding board member. Another lady, a new member of PHA Canada, Jane Cernoski, who's a patient as well from just outside Ottawa, and also a PHA Canada ambassador. And then last but not least, a gentleman right in front of me, Steve Van Warmer, that many of you know. Steve has done more to raise awareness globally of PH than anybody I know. He founded PH Aware. Yes, one chair left, I haven't forgotten. <laughs> and last but not least, my friend and colleague, Dr. Jason Weatherall from Edmonton, a PH doctor, and one of our young doctors who's becoming rapidly one of the leaders of the PH community in Canada. So great to have Jason with us. Yeah, perfect. So with that, I wanted to pose to our panel members a very simple question. Many of them have been involved in PH for a little while. So what do you think has been the most important evolutionary progress that we've had, the most exciting thing in the last 15 years? Maybe we'll start with Sharon, who's been involved in PH for a long time. Hi, good morning. Well, I'm going to have two. 
Oh, just a, a quick one. I have to say, um, for me, the first one is December 2016. And that was our hiring of our executive director, Jamie. Uh, to me, that set the organization on a path of growth and advancement. And through that, I mean, all of us are here today. We're reaching wider, larger. Without that, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be where we are. So that's first and foremost. The second one, I really, when I reflect and I look at what's going on today, for me, it's the, the embracement of technology. Um, as a PH patient, I can't always travel to these events. Um, during COVID, of course, we couldn't. And I was just so impressed with the technology that um, Jamie and the staff have developed to allow us all to connect, um, to receive excellent medical information. And for me as a patient, um, it's a difficult disease and it's, it's hard to feel strong and confident. But if you get good medical information, it just helps tremendously. And so for me, it's the technology that has allowed that information to flow to us, us patients. Um, I think for me it has been uh, seeing that there's a community of warriors, uh, of patients, of care members, be that doctors, nurses, uh, as well as your family and friends out there to support you, uh, coast to coast, all, all across Canada, and virtually we were able to do that for the conference, uh, also through meetups throughout the months, able to connect with each other. Some people connect a lot on the Facebook Canadian Friends page. That's been a great project. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> um, it's, it's been great to see the different medications that have been in our hands, helping our lungs. Uh, every, every, we all are different in responding to the medications, so it's very important that we have as many, and that the doctors have as many medications that they can help us to fight this progressive condition. So the advocacy that we see from patients, from their caregivers, from medical staff, has been crucial to get these medications at an affordable price in our hands, in our lungs. Super. Steve? Well, both of you ladies kind of took uh, something I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I think it's, you know, connectivity. And that connectivity is uh, interpersonal connectivity or technological uh, connectivity in the sense that, you know, when my son was diagnosed in 2006, 15, 6, 17 years ago, uh, whatever it was, as uh, at that time, I think Facebook was very infancy in its group, uh, support groups much like PHA's Canada. Before you were even PHA Canada, mm -hmm. it was individual support groups at an individual hospital level, which is all great. Uh, but just the fact that now, uh, you know, through events like this, through, you know, the, after COVID, the power of Zooms and uh, all those kind of uh, platforms uh, allows people, in people that are watching this live stream, uh, uh, welcome, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and, and things on the tech side, which we do is, uh, you know, like with the podcast, the kind of the mission behind that is, you know, especially in a place like Canada where people are physically isolated, um, let alone, you know, after the effects of uh, COVID, people that are like mentally isolated, to be able to reach people and connect people and show people that they are uh, all part of the same community, I think is an important thing. Fantastic. Jason. Uh, you know, I haven't been in the field for 15 years, but I think the, the coolest thing that I see is, is the role that PHA Canada and patients have played um, in research now. What I mean by that is it, it, research used to be on patients, and now it's done for patients and with patients, and, and PHA Canada is playing a leadership role, not just in getting the word out, but in actually how we do it. And so they have input into, as you said, how do we design research? What should we be measuring? What matters the most? And, and so they really have a seat at the table from the beginning and not just at the end. And I think that is an evolution in research, medical research in general. It's very patient-oriented from the beginning. Mm. And uh, I think that is a tremendous advance. Mm. 
fantastic, very exciting. Um, any questions from the audience or anything you wanted to add about the most exciting thing in the last 15 years since we've been at this? There is a couple of microphones, I think, available. Maybe I'll let you think about that. And then, obviously, all of us are happy with where we are. We haven't cured this. Obviously, people still unwell, that we have lots of work to do. So let's look forward. Let's look at sort of what's going to be most exciting. 15 years is a long time, so we're not going to do that. Let's look forward five years, which is a nice sort of time frame that we can, I think, envision changes. Back to you, Sharon. What do you think is going to be the most important thing we do, not just at PHA Canada, but in the PH community, the next five years? Um, I think for me, I've, um, you know, fortunately, I've, I've lived with PH for a very long time, 23 years diagnosed. And I see in the next five years, um, I see some exciting, really for the, for the first time, some really exciting medication coming to the forefront. Um, I have some concerns um, around abilities to finance that medication for our treatment. And I think um, now is the best time to be organized, to be um, advocating. We're going to have to be on our toes. We're going to have to be um, trying new things because I think it's going to be getting more and more difficult and more and more important to get these medications um, approved in our provinces. So I know I intend to increase my involvement to try to make that happen. It's obviously very important to me personally, and I really um, encourage all of you to step forward. I know there's a session um, regarding advocacy um, this afternoon, and what all of us can be doing in that regard. I, I see that as the absolute key going forward. If I could echo that, I'm going to quote Sharon from many years ago. She said, what's the point of developing new medications and research if we can't get them paid for? So advocacy will always be an important job that we have to make sure everybody across the country has access to medications. Thank you, Sharon. Jane? Uh, just echoing what, what Sharon has been saying with uh, the, the more treatment options, uh, they look promising. There's one out there that I'm sure is on everyone's mind. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it or not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very excited for that. So uh, I know every time I go to see my doctor, I say, is there any clinical trial I'm, I'm uh, eligible for? And uh, always asking to, because there's new treatments, there's in the pipeline so eventually those will hopefully get into our hands and into our lungs and help uh, us live better with this condition and then the hopes for a cure one day it's always the hope is always alive and it keeps me going and it keeps me motivated and breathing well clearly all of us want new and better therapies that are easier to use in some of the complex ones we have now and a cure as well and so as you know the last session today very important looking at these new therapies that yes we're allowed to say so Tadercept although people say it in different ways I know <laughs> we're gonna have to work on the pronunciation um, so we'll chat about that later this afternoon Steve uh, I would just say an increased um, the increased role of technology in new ways um, for example, uh, again, I, I default to the to the to the podcast we do. Like we 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 are building, or we have built, I should say, uh, uh, trans, every piece of content we've ever made, and are educating in, into chatbots, so that when people go and Google, and they, everyone always says, "Oh, don't Google it." So we're getting like real world patient experiences, and the pa you know the patient voice, uh, as you talked about, uh, doctors and experts that we've talked to. So that's just on that kind of awareness and advocacy side. And then, you know, like right before this session, I met a Dr. Uh, Dr. Weatherall here. Like I've heard his name through uh, work we're, we're doing with, um, with a, an app we uh, built for like remote six minute walk testing that he's building into protocols here in Canada with collaborations with places like Stanford and others that are ways that patients, instead of going again, talking about remote places that they could do this, you know, out of clinic study and participate in that in that way uh, to uh, to create big data, which hopefully uh, leads to you know more uh, more therapies and more options. Fantastic, and Jason to wrap it up. Well, I, I don't really have much to, to add to those. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm excited about. I think I think with 
if, if I could just say, like, I, I really think that BHA Canada and all the patients are really in a good position to, to make a difference about getting access to medications. I think the community should take lessons from the cystic fibrosis community who recently was successful at getting access to a groundbreaking revolutionary treatment. And it was because of advocacy, like policymakers don't listen to us, they listen to you. And I'm really excited that you're positioned to advocate for yourselves with an organization like this. I'm also really excited about the technology thing because I think it, it improves equity of, uh, of access to clinical research. It's not with technology, you won't have to live in Toronto or Montreal, Vancouver. You can you can live in northern Canada and participate in a clinical trial potentially without having to come back and forth because of what we're able to do now. And I think that's um, that's really exciting. Well, I agree. Those are all exciting, wonderful ideas. Thank you all. If I could chime in, um, I like all those ideas. The one thing I think I'm still in my mind not happy that we're not doing well is we are not connecting with every patient that gets diagnosed with PH in Canada. We're not even close to that. And I hope technology helps us, but I think of people that walk in the first day in my office and get diagnosed, they're not ready to reach out and connect online with somebody. They just kind of sometimes want to hunker down with their family and friends and kind of think about this and try to get better. And so I don't quite know. We've had lots of ideas over the 15 years about how to reach those people, but it's not something that I don't think we've done in a good enough way yet. And so that, in my mind, next five years, if we're going to do all of this other wonderful stuff, better treatments, research, get the patients involved, we're going to have to reach them because, you know, it can't be the same people doing the same trials over and over. And so that's what I see in the next five years. I think we're going to have to work using technology and other things on the ground to connect more people. So this isn't going to be 200 people. It's going to be 500 people in five years. Well, Sanjay, if I may say one thing. Yeah, please. Yesterday, this is what's beautiful about a conference like this. I met a patient yesterday, and uh, she said she... First time coming to this conference, was diagnosed over COVID, and she said she's never met another pulmonary hypertension patient in her life, and she's here. I, I, her name is Jane. Uh, Jane, I don't know if you raise your hand. You, you can welcome Jane, you know, over here. You know, and, and, and I just think, you know, with, with, with patients and stories and we interconnect, you know, another just a real quick footnote Please. of five years is yeah. like I, I met this uh, I met this Jane yesterday <laughs> and so I hope my hope is she and she's a recent surrogate mother so I'm hoping uh, of the five years that she, I, we come back and see her lovely uh, son in another five years <laughs> yeah. so we have a couple of minutes any comments questions anybody Oh, I think we go there, yes. Thank you, Darren. So I just wanted to say, Jane, yes, um, with, Jane does always ask about the research, and am I eligible for research, and I think you walk too far, love. <laughs> but your app, PH Aware, if, does it still, because from what I remember, it connects patients to research near where they live, is that correct? Oh, um, I don't, uh, we have a couple different things. I think what you're talking about is, uh, uh, is, um, is on our clinical trials on our website, phor.global, if you, on the home page or on the clinical trials page, you, ba you basically have this matching tool that you put in your name and uh, uh, um, four or five different questions, uh, and it, for all intents and purposes, kind of pre-qualifies you. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how uh, um, the registry works here for, uh, for, um, you know, finding trials in, in Canada, but it, it should work here domestically. You, you say, oh, I want to look for a place 50 miles, 20 miles, five miles uh, from, my, from my home, and it, it lines you up with the hospitals and sites that do that, if that's what you're referring to, yes. So, Jamie, I think we're on time, 10 o'clock? Perfect, okay, well, let's maybe end the closing of uh, the opening plenary. Thank you all for joining us in person. We're so excited, happy to have met many of you, but looking forward to meeting the rest and have a fantastic day and we will connect again this afternoon.